Hey everybody, welcome back to VR and with LJ. Uh, in today's uh, episode, what we're going to be doing is just doing a cockpit overview. So we're going to take off. I'm going to show you how to start up the aircraft and get it off the ground. And then we're just going to go into an orbit around the airport. And while the aircraft is doing that, we're going to go over all of the instruments, all the way from the left, on to the top, down to the right, and obviously the uh, eject handle and the buttons down here. So I hope this video will be helpful in making you understand how to use the aircraft, and also while watching uh, not only me, but others play the game, you'll understand what they're doing as they're pushing buttons, because um, the two videos that I, I made previously uh, I didn't really do a lot of talking because uh, it was my test videos. I just basically wanted to see if I can record a video and get it up onto YouTube. And that was it. <laughs> so in the future, uh, I'm planning to uh, have more uh, VR gaming on here. Uh, so you guys can see the different games that are out there right now for VRing. And also my main... Uh, uh, videos are going to be on VTOL VR. Uh, once I get better with using the mission editor, I'm hoping to create my own scenarios so I can make uh, custom training missions and custom missions and movies. And, and uh, maybe I can have people tell me, you know, like, hey, could you do this type of mission and stuff and then, you know, record it and stuff. So that's for the foreseeable future. Obviously, as things get uh, more better with the game, it's still an alpha. Um, I'm hoping multiplayer uh, is in there so uh, i can definitely be playing with my bud iceman uh, he's offline right now getting his computer squared away uh, once he's back up online be ready guys seven days to die alpha 17 once that's dropped uh, him and i are going to be getting back into that there's going to be a lot of new stuff in there um, definitely looking forward to the new vehicle where you know one person can drive the other can shoot and stuff like that so Totally different game. It's really cool. It's not VR, but you'll definitely uh, take a like uh, looking into that. Also, in that game, you're going to be introduced to Short But Lucky. Uh, to be continued. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You'll meet him, too, and then it'll be all good. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into the aircraft and uh, get it started up. And let's just get off the ground and get into an orbit, and then we'll start going over all the instruments. All right, let's do it. Okay, here we are again in the uh, AV42C. Uh, as you know, it's a, from my other videos, it's a lot slower than the other one. Before I start, let me just get the aircraft started and I can have the camera on so that way it can you can see better. All right, so to start up this aircraft, basically you wanna get your main battery on. Now as your main battery is on, it's being drained because there's nothing charging it right now. So you want to turn on your auxiliary power unit. You're going to be waiting for it to come all the way up here to the green. And once it's there, now the APU is charging your main battery. So your battery won't die, but obviously you don't want to leave that because then your APU gets screwed because you don't have your engines running. So let's get the engines going. So we're going to start with engine number one. And you're just going to wait till it comes around and then it's going to come back down. And it's going to hover about here, so just above the yellow. Perfect. Do the same with the second. Uh, by no means do you have to start up one and wait for the other. I just do it that way, or you can flip them both at the same time. Uh, once both engines are idling at the same, now you can turn your auxiliary power unit off because your engines is charging your main batteries. All right, I'm not going to turn on all the instruments. Uh, as yet, but uh, just the ones that we need to get off the ground. So I'm just going to go with the strobe lights. Uh, we're going to leave all that stuff on there. Uh, let's get our HUD so we can see our instruments, which is this power. Uh, I'll explain up top once we get up what this power is. Uh, let's see our fuel, because that's important. Uh, turn that on. 
and lets me get comfortable in the chair here. So I'm just gonna adjust my handle and I'll explain about this once we're up in the air. Uh, right about that. All right, we're pretty much ready to roll. So let's uh, just head on down the uh, runway here. I'm gonna turn my brakes off. Give it a little throttle. Oh, I always forget to do this. I'm gonna explain about the nozzle. I uh, remember this vehicle can take off uh, vertically. So right now my tilt is at 90. So if I throttle up, the aircraft will go straight up. So I'm just gonna push it forward while holding my brake. All right, so let's, uh, get, I wanna get over here. Now for this aircraft, you shouldn't need the full length of the runway because it's, uh, it's not as, uh, as fast as the other. So I didn't need to come back here, but I just like taking off from down here. I know I'm pretty close right now to the uh, instruments and stuff. It's because I haven't turned on the camera yet in the aircraft, so just bear with me. Once we're up in the air, I wanted to go over all that stuff. I just want to get us up. All right, so nothing fancy. I'm just pointing down. I'm going to go with flaps at two. So that way I can get some good lift. And right, let's do it. Let's get off the ground. Uh, took the landing gear up as you can see when your gear is up no light when it's down landing gear it's green okay now you see me playing with the flaps here zero one and two uh, I'll explain that as I'm going around the instruments, but basically it helps you with your lift, especially if you're very heavy to, uh, with weapons. So now that I'm pretty much, I'm at 6,000 feet right now, so let's just go to zero flaps, and as you can see the plane is coming down. Alright, so I'm going to start heading in this direction, and let's get the afterburners down. Alright, so we can just orbit here now. So I'm just going to... Got a little leveled. And what I'm doing is getting that meatball in the horizon, the two solid lines there. So now I'm pretty much horizontal. So I'm just going to stay at this altitude. I'm going to let go. So basically the aircraft now, since I'm banked to the left, is going to continuously just orbit. And you can adjust it by just banking a little bit don't pull back or push forward because you will readjust your altitude and it'll automatically turn your auto off all right so now that we're up in the air let's begin going from the left all the way around to the right on what uh, all these buttons and little doohickey majiggies do now a couple of them I don't know about and I apologize, at some point uh, I'll find out what they are and I'll let you know. So let's turn the cameras on first before we do everything. So I'm just going to turn on this MFDs. These are your MFDs, your multifunctional displays. Uh, not in this video. I'm going to do a whole separate video on just the MFDs because there's so much information that it can be uh, very lengthy. So. Don't worry about that, we'll do that in another video. So, for this, let's just get the S-cam going, and I'm just gonna stay in smooth look and autofocus, and let's see what you would see. So basically, this is what you're seeing. I'm looking at what you're seeing. I could turn it off, and I'm gonna do another video just on smart look. Uh, the smooth, uh, not smooth look, but the spectator camera. I think it's one of the most important uh, MFDs in the aircraft it beca is because it allows you to see what I want you to see. And in the first two videos, 
I was playing around with it and that's why the views were switching a lot and then you know the, I'll get better with it uh, just give me time to play around and uh, learn what each of it do but once we get to the MFD uh, tutorial we'll go through all of it and how it works and what does what all right so with that said let's start from over here and work our way around now over here is your auto trim so for people who are not familiar with aircrafts or who has never played any kind of flight simulator they might not know what trim is uh, basically if my hands was your aircraft wings and my fingers were weapons so if each one of those was 600 600 pound bombs per se uh, as you drop one from the right side the left side gets heavier so the plane will t and the aircraft will tend to want to bank to the left so in other games where you can adjust your trim like DCS especially for the A10 uh, you could readjust on your uh, HOTAS you know your trim to get your aircraft to level out automatically uh, not automatically but manually or automatically so in this aircraft and the other one this I believe that's what that is all this yaw roll and all that stuff I've never messed with it, it's always been on, so I'm not really sure what they'll do, but I'm sure auto trim uh, re-stabilizes the aircraft as I'm firing my weapons. At some point I'm going to turn it off and try it out to see what it does, so that way I can let you guys know. Alright, uh, flight assist, it's another button I've never used, or toggle that I've never used, I don't know what it does. Uh, I'll find out and let you know uh, at a later point, but for now, I've never toggled it, it's always been this way, and it flies great. <laughs> uh, right here is your MP3 player, so on your computer or your PC, there's a folder for MP3s. If you put them in there, you can play it from here, uh, and it's pretty generic. You can go forward and back, and you can toggle you know, the volume, and that's it. There's nothing that shows you what is playing and all that stuff, so I'm assuming at some point, uh, later on in the future that'll be fixed and we can wait for that way way down the line because there's so much other things you can work on uh, next we'll come back to this because this is part of the throttles and stuff here so don't worry about that the reaction control system that is for your shaft and flares uh, I'm gonna turn them off right now but basically uh, this button right here uh, what you guys are not seeing is me sitting on the chair like I said in my other video with my hands holding this joystick and my other hand holding this I use the HTC Vive so this button is the top button right above the big circle that button controls your flares and shafts as you push that it shoots it out and I'm gonna show you I'm just gonna go to fly along so you can see the outside of the aircraft and this is what it does See? so obviously if a missile or somebody shooting at you that's what you would want to use to try and avoid it uh, we're gonna get into another video on how to avoid missiles because right now I tell you it's really tough and I'm still learning myself but I really want to um, pass it on along to someone all right so let's get back into the cockpit So here is your flares and shaft. You can turn them off individually and use one at a time if you want to, depending on the mission and if you know what particular weapons will be firing at you. Or you can have them both on and just use them both. Honestly, leave them both <laughs> for now until you learn different. Uh, right here is your radar warning system. So let's turn it on. So here is your radar. So if there were aircraft and other planes or tanks or stuff, in the vicinity, you would see it here. It would show up. Uh, and that other mission that I did where you were hearing all of those beeps and ticks and poops, that's what those were. All right. You can put it on silent or turn it off, but leave it on. If you turn it on off or put it on silent, you won't know if somebody's shooting at you or if AAA is coming at you or something. You know, leave it on. Uh, right here is your fuel port. On this aircraft, it is... Sorry about this, but I just want you to see. Uh, 
Uh, but basically, on the top up here is where the boom, I think it's the boom, I don't know what it's called, where the fuel nozzle <laughs> comes in and, and attaches to the plane in uh, refueling in the air. So when you're coming into the tanker, you want to open your fuel port and when the fuel port opens then it knows you're coming for fuel and that's what that is. So we've pretty much covered everything on this side with the exception of this right here. Uh, this here is for carrier operations. Your launch bar is when you're on the carrier deck and you're pulling up to the catapult. Uh, you want to have your launch bar deployed. So that way, once you drive up, and I'll do another video on how to take off and land on a carrier. <laughs> Hopefully once, not three times. But um, once that's down, you can hook to the catapult and then take off. Uh, the other one is your hook. So when you're coming in to land on the aircraft carrier, this is to deploy that hook. All right? Don't forget, once you land on the carrier, your hook is still hooked to the cable. So you want to you wanna bring it back up and it'll detach and you'll know because your aircraft will move forward a little bit because it's not being pulled back. All right. Now right here is your flaps. Uh, for those who don't know about flaps or you know or have never really played a flying aircraft game, uh, as your aircraft wing, as the air is blowing, when you adjust your flaps, 0, 1, 2, basically you're turning your flaps down and it's creating more lift on the aircraft. So as you slow down, if you apply flaps, it helps keep the aircraft uh, lifted. So that's what that is. It helps in takeoff. Uh, let me just stop this from being there. Uh, oh, there we go. So you use it for takeoff and landing uh, because you're flying really slow. Obviously on takeoffs it's because your aircraft is heavy and you need the extra lift to get you off. On the other aircraft there is something called cat trim, but I'll explain about that once we get onto that aircraft. Alright, and that's fine. Here is your landing gear. Like I said, once your landing gear is stowed and inside the light is off, as you put it down, yellow means it's, it's being retracted or uh, deployed. Green means it's down. Oh, I'm definitely falling here because I had my wheels up. Let's turn this off. Whoa. Just get back leveled. It's because I had my speed down. Okay, so. As we're coming around now, now we're getting to the visor and the navigation, uh, night mode. So, as you can see on the HUD, my instruments are all right here. My altitude, my speed, and, and you know information that I need for flying. So, as I turn my head away from the HUD, you would notice you can't see any of that stuff. Also, if you had a waypoint set, or if you had something targeted, you won't see it because you're turned away. To fix that, you want to turn your HMCS power on and you want to bring your HUD visor down. Now you can do it two ways. Uh, since I use the Vive, I can use my hands to do it, but there are other controller, uh, other uh, controlling system that can't do that really well, so the designer added these two buttons for you. So if you hit visor, and I know you probably won't see it, but the visor is now down, so if you notice as I turn, see how I see my altitude, speed, I'm not armed right now, and my compass heading. If my waypoint was over here, I would actually see the waypoint indicator and the targets. Alright, so we're going to leave those on. Uh, for Vive users, or people who use their hands, it's the side of your head. You just come to the side and you feel a vibration, and then you just pull your trigger, and it'll go up and down. Once you're visor is down, you come to the front and you'd feel a vibration and then you turn your night vision on and trigger to turn it back off. Alright, so I'm just going to turn off the visor because I don't need all that stuff. Alright, so that's what that is. So now, as we're coming around, I'm just going to turn on these MFDs. We're not going to talk about these right now. TGP and my NAV. 
So we can just see where we are and that's it. That's fine. So I want to do a separate video on the MFDs because there's a lot of information as you can see. Uh, sensor of interest, you know, the targeting gun pod, I can move it around and stuff like that. Another video, we will do that. All right, so let's just keep coming around. Now, this is your warning system here. Uh, obviously, nobody's targeting us or anything, so these are not lit, but they're, I think, launch warning, and there's other warnings here. And obviously, if you had aircraft in the air and tanks and stuff, you would see it on here. It's items that can actually attack you and stuff. You would also see friendlies, and but they'll be blue, and you know not to attack them. So, keep on coming. Typical uh, external lights, if you navigation lights, your strobe, and your landing light. Nothing uh, too crazy here. Uh, up here is your internal lights, your instruments. If you turn your instruments, you turn on your instrument for night mode. And you can adjust the brightness of that with this right here. All right. So I'm just going to turn it off because we don't need it. Obviously your cockpit light, and then the light for in the back when to pick up the guys. All right, you can open the door, but I'm not going to do it while I'm flying. Okay, uh, so let's keep coming. This way. So these two guys right here are your missile launch light. So if you were in the other aircraft, you can use your AMRAMs, and uh, the target is way out there, and you don't get a tone that to fire. These will light, and you know that you're locked, and you're good to go. And that's what those are for. Okay. So let's just keep coming along. Uh, if you're flying into the sun and it's too bright, you can use your HUD tint to adjust your tint. All right? Uh, your brightness is of your HUD itself. You can adjust the brightness of it. I'm gonna put this back, the TGP forward, just straight. All right. And then you declutter all this information. If you don't like it, you can turn it off. Well, not all of it, but you can declutter your screen and that's it that's as much i don't think you want to have any more than that off because then you're gonna die okay so turn it on okay so in this box here if we were following a waypoint let's just set one and my next video is going to show that you know i'm going to show you how to follow waypoints and how to create waypoints with your gps system and stuff but uh, I'm just going to go here, I'm going to put my nav here so you can see. Uh, right now, I have no waypoint set because I'm really not, I'm just orbiting, but there's no objectives here, so I really can't set any waypoint. Now I can set a waypoint to the, the aircraft that is flying around, the refueler, by just hitting uh, fuel. So you see this green line? That is it. So now you have a waypoint. You can see it. And let me put my visor back down so you'll see the waypoint going this way. See how it ends right here? So now you can see the waypoint and that information. All right. So if I don't want to go for that plane anymore or wherever the waypoint was, I can just hit clear waypoint. And that's what that does. Okay. Altitude mode right here is your altitude. Your radar altitude right now I'm at 6,382 feet so you can change your altitude you know meters all that whatever use what you like I like feet okay we talked about those already now this is your autopilot station I guess you can call it uh, if you're in any autopilot at all if you hit off it'll kill it basically off kills it all right nav self-explanatory I'm gonna set it back for let's go to the aircraft carrier so return the aircraft carrier is right here so return to base and I'm just gonna tell the aircraft to go by itself so nav and there it goes it starts to follow the waypoint on its own but I'm not gonna do it because it's going so let's turn it off and let's just bring it back up all right let's stay at this uh, altitude and just orbit continue we've been doing all right that's what the nav does hover is for when you are doing vertical uh, takeoff and landings or you, if you want to shoot at a, at a target or infantry with your uh, your gun pod 
I don't have the gun pod loaded. I have the other weapon. I think it's the M32. Yep, the M230. So it's underneath. You can't see it. But with the other weapon, it's you can see it right here. It's because it's a Gatling gun. But uh, with this particular weapon loaded, you can move your head like an Apache and the weapon will shoot by using your head instead of forward. Another video. I know it's action packed, but you're going to have to wait. <laughs> All right. So hover is for that. When your nozzles, right here where it says tilt, is at 90, you're, and you want to hover, you just want to stay there, you hit hover and altitude. And you would stay at that altitude and you'd hover. Okay. Uh, heading, basically, if I know I'm going to be flying in this direction for a good while, I'm just going to stay at this heading and altitude. There we go. Um, my hands are free, it frees me up to uh, check my weapons, uh, all this other stuff, you know. So, that's what that does. So, I'm just going to stay on that for now. So, let's keep coming around. Here's your fuel, obviously, um, your internal fuel. Uh, I don't know what the, I'm assuming it's gallons or liters or something, but I don't know what the unit is for an aircraft. Somebody can probably put in the comments what it is, but that's how much you got right there. You can have on the other aircraft a total of three external fuel tanks. Uh, this, I think you can do one, I'm not sure, I've never tried it, excuse me, but um, basically that's what that is. And here is your consumption of your fuel, how fast it's flowing, so obviously if I throttle up, and when you go to afterburner, you'll see an AB right here. I should be consuming more fuel. And that's what this one does. And to turn it on, you just power and fuel. And it comes on. Same thing with this one. Power and radar. Alright. Now, if you notice on the HUD, and I'm going to show you guys in another one, all about the HUD. Right at the bottom of this left is a solid bar with a line across that's your throttle indicator so as you go down you see how it's moving where that lining is is where your afterburn point is so basically that's what that is um, okay so let's continue along all right so we're done with this pretty much over here we've talked about all of that uh, and carrier takeoff nothing special doesn't serves no purpose but you can grab this handle if you want to when you're doing a carrier takeoff and the other craft they have two up here you can grab just for looks really uh, we talked about the APU the engines the main battery the comms so in the last couple of missions while we were uh, fighting you were hearing the the other uh, aircraft you know guns 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 and stuff that's the actual designer but basically that's this volume right here you can adjust that volume if you want to turn it up or down uh, also, let's see, doors, opens the doors in the back, and your brake lock just keeps you, you know, right, keep your brake locks. So at the beginning, you also saw me adjust my hand, my joystick by using the auto. Now you can do it manually if you wanted to, to kind of get it on your knee or your leg, where you want it. But the easiest way is to just do auto, grab the, the stick, and then put it where you're comfortable let it go and then hit the green and now it stays right there so whenever I put my hand see it's right there all right now the trick to using this joystick when I first bought this game it was a little weird uh, I'm a huge flight sim guy and when I first bought it I didn't play it as much because uh, I wasn't using a joystick or HOTAS but once I really got into it and put the hours, it, it, it's, it's so natural. It feels exactly like a joystick. So the key to that for me personally, now this is just my personal opinion, is this little square box down here on the right side all the way at the bottom. You see that dot in the middle? What that is telling you is your joystick is perfectly centered and the aircraft is just perfect. So, if you apply yaw, you'll notice the line move. So that's how you tell where your yaw is. Okay? Uh, yaw, basically, if the aircraft is flying, when you 
when you on this game when you tilt your hands this way for y'all you're basically making the aircraft go like this all right to adjust your left and right okay so that box is how you fly so obviously if you're pointed up now my joystick is back and I let the stick go it's assuming the plane is flying straight and this is where a lot of my friends who try to get confused so if you grab the joystick you know straight right now you're actually gonna be when you're leveled you're literally pushing down and you're not pulling the stick back so that box really it helps you try and what I try to do is try to just level myself out let it go and then grab it again so I'm pretty much centered and you don't have to do it a lot you after a while you don't even notice it it just comes natural and that's pretty much how you use the stick uh, it's not that complicated so don't let it scare you give it a shot all right so let's get back into orbit and keep coming around because we're almost done with everything we talked about here now we don't have weapons loaded on this one so I'm going to mask the arm. Actually, we do have the M230, I'm sorry. So as you can see, now that I've armed my weapons, it's come up. So we have 230. All right. As you can see, it counts down as you're firing. Now, as I said, with this particular weapon, you can move it. Uh, once you're hovering or moving very slow, it unslaves and you can move it with your head. But because the aircraft is flying fast and moving forward, uh, it's locked and it's slaved and it won't it won't move. All right, by the next video for that one. Uh, so continuing along, we'll leave the weapons on. If you had uh, external fuel tanks and stuff and you wanted to jettison them, you can do it from right here. by just empty, none, no all, and then hit the button and boom, jettisons. Uh, you can also do it from your equipment screen. Right now you're in config mode, so if you go to jettison, I could say, well, you know what, I want to jettison these two AM9s and this one. And come down here and hit it. Let's just do it. So now it just dropped those. Okay? And that's how you do that. You want to take it off jettison mode, go back to config mode. So here, now I can configure it. I can take it off slave mode and stuff like that. Each weapon you can do that. All right, so I'm gonna go back to home and nav. <clears throat> so that's down there. Uh, you saw in the other video, the eject handle does work. Yes, you do wanna use it. it, does save you when you're doing crazy aircraft carrier landings and stuff. Uh, these two buttons here, adjust the up and down of your chair. I don't wanna move it too much because I'm comfortable where I'm at now. But as you can see, it goes up and down. Okay, and your throttle, you can adjust the length up and down. So let me get it back where I'm comfortable. Okay, okay right there. So that's pretty much everything. I don't think you can grab that. Nope. Let's just take a look here real quick. Oh. Uh, I believe that's everything. So let's just get back down and stop this video and then for the next video that I'm going to do uh, we're going to get into the flight basics um, why do you use the flaps how do you follow waypoints how do you use the GPS uh, system to create your own waypoints and st stuff like that so let's just get back to the base uh, i'm not going to do any fancy landing let's just get back i'll vertically let them down touch down and then we'll call it and then we'll go go from there so right here is where we want to go so i'm just going to go up. Okay, i'm going to send it to my gps go to my home GPS, and there's the waypoint I put down, and then I could tell it be my waypoint, and there it is. 
so that's where we're heading and that's how you can use the GPS system but I'll show you how you plot more points and then you make it a path and then you can go from there all right so let's uh, get this landing down here and call it a day so I'm gonna get landing on I'm gonna start slowing down from now Let's get back to nav here so we can see. I'm going to reset the view and zoom in. Alright. Okay. So I'm starting to drop. So I'm going to give it one flap. See how it's giving me a little bit of lift? There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm still lifting. So I'm going to drop my speed down a little bit. There's the refueler, right there. Uh, we'll definitely have to do an in-air refuel. <laughs> I'm terrible at it and I need to practice, so we'll do it together. Okay, we're coming in, the airport is right over there. So I'm gonna start tilting my nozzles, but let's get up a little bit higher. It's actually dropping here. So let's just turn right here, turn around and come down. So I'm going to slow down. And for this one, I'm just going to use the auto hover because the other video, I want to get in the, the meat and, and, and bones about how to do this. All right, so I'm going to tilt my nozzle to 90 degrees. I'm going slow because I'm, I'm moving forward. I want to transition. I'm going to take my flaps off because I don't want the lift. Landing gear. All right. Uh, one thing you could know, any warning that you get, you can always turn it off by hitting the master caution um, and it'll turn it off. So I'm just going to hover right here and keep the altitude. Notice on my left where it says Canon Gimbal all the way down where it says hover and altitude. Now for hovering, this is my throttle. You see that solid line? If I'm above that line, I'm going to be going up. Now if you look on this side, it says vert. I'm going to call it my, <laughs> this is what I call it, the, my vertical speed indicator. But basically it tells you how fast you're going up and how fast you're going down. So let's head on in. I'm going to just tilt forward. Because I'm in hover and altitude, it's going slow. So I'm just going to come down throttle. Let's get our wheels down. I'm going to tilt forward more. Now in this mode, when you do move the joystick, it doesn't take you out of autopilot. So for anybody who's new and not um, comfortable with the vertical stuff, you can use these two to practice. And that's what I did. I, I practiced with this for a while to get a feel for how it feels to hover. And then eventually I started turning it off and trying it without it. And I'm, I'm getting better. I'm not an expert, but I definitely am getting better with, uh, without using it. But like I said, for this video, I just wanted to get down safe. I didn't want to crash. Uh, and then we'll we'll do a video just on vertical and takeoff and landings. All right. All right, my gear is down. I'm full throttle down, and I'm just coming down. I'm going to yaw to the right. Look at the little square. I'm going to throttle up a little bit. Now, you see how my throttle is on the line? I sh there we go. Just slow movements. I'm just throttling down slowly. Coming down. I'm going to tilt my nose up. So that way I don't hit my front wheel. And that's it. We're down. I want to apply brake. But let's uh, get up on this helicopter pad right here. 
and the brake for the valve is just on the throttle hand, your trigger, that's the brakes, okay? All right, I'm gonna put my parking brake on, take my hand off the throttle, let's power everything down. I'm gonna turn off my MSD, my MFDs. I'm powering down my TGP, turn that off, that off, that off. Let's go on safe, weapon safe. I'm gonna turn off my hover, bring my visor back up, turn this power off, fuel off, radar off, turn my lights off. Open the back door, lights are off, engines off, and obviously your main batteries. You don't want it to die on you. All right, hey, uh, thanks again, everyone, for watching. I hope this was uh, very informative. Uh, we did go around all of the instruments on the aircraft, the ones that I knew about. Uh, the ones that I don't know, I'll figure out at some point and come back and uh, let you guys know. Uh, we saw the eject handle works, we talked about the throttle, the joystick, how to fly using the joystick with the square in the right corner, and then using your throttle with the throttle indicator on the left, also with your vertical uh, speed indicator on the right for when you're in hover mode. Uh, I'll be doing more videos on how to use everything in combat and all that stuff. Uh, I'm just getting going. Uh, this was mostly made for my brother uh, so he could play this game and uh, some family members wanted to see a couple of the VR stuff so I'm not an expert I'm new to YouTube and I'm just trying to get some videos out to hopefully help people learn how to play the game and also uh, when they're watching me and others play they'll know what we're doing and they'll understand and it'll it'll make sense and it'll be more of an exciting video so with that uh, let's call it a day and keep your wings down Keep flying safe. LJ out.